Good day and welcome to Malaika, the talk show for African Christian women. A talk show where we talk about topics that touch our lives and challenge us all the time. So sit back, relax as we discover the topic of the day. So there you have it. Differences between men and women. To elaborate on this topic, I have with me Mama Audrey. Happy to be here, Jackie, with you. Yeah, thank you. I'm sure you will do a great job as usual. <laughs> <laughs> and interesting discussion today. Exactly. <laughs> as well as Auntie Zod. It's good to have you from Zimbabwe. Happy to be here, Jackie, and looking forward to this subject. <laughs> and Tatiana, good to have you, Tat. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> So today, without further ado, we are going to move over to Tatiana for Tat's Overview. So Tatiana, yes, differences between men and women. Could you please tell us what you find out regarding... Of the, course, Jackie. Yeah. Well, the question today is, are men and, wi and women really different? Well, according to the Relationship Institute, because there is an institute that studies relationships, uh. research indicates yes. Indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Today, I would like to highlight three areas that men and women differ. Mm -hmm. The first being one's orientation towards life. Men tend to be more logical, mm -hmm. more rational, and more aggressive. Women, not all, generally are more intuitive, holistic and creative. Ooh, I like wow. that. <laughs> I know. The second one is one sense of self. Mm -hmm. A man is really, is really defined through his ability to achieve results, through success and accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And a woman is defined by her feelings and her quality of her relationships. Very profound. Mm -hmm. Lastly, to feel good about oneself. Men must achieve goals by themselves, for it is a symbol of efficiency and power and competence. However, women obtain this by talking <laughs> and by sharing and relating their feelings and many ideas. <laughs> it's true. Now let's look at the conflicts that arise due to these some differences. And if anyone here or if anyone watching us can identify to this, you can just give a little show of hand. Okay, let's start. Here are the most frequent complaints. Men say that women are always trying to change them. Oh, uh, uh. never. <coughs> women say that men don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> so now what conflicts what conflicts really arise between like men and women? Men are often blamed for women's problems. Mm. That's and why I did that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can see the, the subtle eye. <laughs> never. Men if men are busy with work, women often take this as a sign of rejection. Mm. Mm. Lastly, women want empathy, yet men often offer solutions. Just the other day, I, I was having a very difficult and long day, yeah. and I sat down and I told my husband what was happening and how I was feeling, yeah. and he told me I needed to take multivitamins, <laughs> and I needed to exercise more and drink water. I said, you know, I didn't actually want, I know what I need to do, you see? I just wanna, I want you to feel, I want you to feel sorry for me. <laughs> and he said, well, that's not very helpful. You need solutions, you need to crack on with life. So anyway, I can identify to that very one. Very practical. Very practical husband. It's very helpful. <laughs> the top five unavoidable fights amongst newlyweds. Mm. Again, raise a, sh raise a hands if you can identify. Yeah. Uh, Different lifestyles. Yeah. In-laws, especially that of the mother-in-law, which is very common in Africa. Yeah, it's true. Fights about children and, and, how to, and how to raise them. Mm -hmm. Financial disagreements is a big one. Yes. And lastly, assumptions and miscommunication, especially if you marry someone from a different culture or a different background, mm -hmm. different language. Yes. Oh, this is bound to happen. Seem mm -hmm. to know something about it, Tatsana. A little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Although culture is dead. <laughs> so this, it, I can say in our household, yeah. culture can never win <laughs> because it? this, oh, our culture is dead. Because if, if one comes, we're so opposite. Yes. We're so opposite if one comes and says, well, you know how I grew up. Well, you know how I grew up. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> this, this one is just, it's, it ends every discussion. <laughs> well, let's look at expectations in, in marriage in Africa because this is really the heart of the matter today. Yeah. In Africa, men are expecting to be respected. In, 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 and in Africa, service equals respect. Mm. Things such as serving a meal, yeah. 
giving a tea as soon as your husband returns home from work, making sure the house is tidy, making sure the children are orderly. <gasps> What a long list. Let's keep going. The household duties are done. That breathe. Yeah, let's just breathe. Ooh, what a list. And after all of this is done, yeah. as if it was nothing, yeah. men are expecting physical affection. That's right. They want sex. Whew. Now women, on the other hand, mm. women are expecting love and they want to be number one in their husband's life. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for an open, open platform for communication, which means they want to be heard. They want to speak and share their feelings and ideas. And they have much to say. True. Lots to say, details. especially after going through that, that <laughs> especially after going through all that daily work. <laughs> some of it may not be so pure, but yeah. it, nevertheless, they want to share. <laughs> all that. Here we go, Jackie. Awesome. Thank you for that, Tatiana. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. So, Auntie Zords, um, in Zimbabwe, can you tell us, how is it on the ground? Well, Jackie, I think uh, Tatiana really has mapped it out well, the differences yes. between men and mm -hmm. women. And what's amazing is that uh, the Lord made us so different, and yet he actually says the two shall become one. Mm -hmm. So there is a mystery where marriage is concerned. But now back to the young couples, especially in our region again. Um, the biggest issue that they face is the expectation on one another, but it's built up from a young girl growing up, that romantic idea of what marriage is. So they get into marriage expecting mm -hmm. all the roses, all the love, all the attention, all the romance. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most often African men are not the most romantic because they've seen their fathers and the relationship between mom and dad, and they see the men taking a stand and so it, it brings conflict because the girl is expecting so much. Um, and this expectation issue is, is it's a big thing because there's a couple that we know that went on honeymoon and somehow it, it, things didn't go as well as they thought it should. Mm. And they came back not glowing, but fighting from day one. Oh, no. And it never ended. And it's been us trying to take care, trying to counsel, trying to help, but it's like it just didn't work from the beginning. Mm. So, Mama Audrey, please, how do young people overcome this? Please, could you enlighten us regarding the differences that we've heard, which are real? How can one actually handle these differences? Between you know, I think that first of all, I like to say that to have expectations mm -hmm. uh, on our partner is not wise because it won't work. Mm. And the whole idea of marriage is for one to complement the other. If we were the same, What's the point? at the end of the day, it would be so boring. I know. <laughs> you know, it would be so boring. Yeah. So I think the Lord knows when I look at my situation, mm -hmm. my husband and I, we are so different. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unbelievable. There's, we'd have nothing to begin with. In Night and day. In Night and day. Chalk and cheese. We're chalk and cheese. Yeah, chalk and we cheese. are. And, you know, that is the great thing because as, as Zodwa says, Auntie Zodwa, uh, the, it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. How to become one? Yeah. I mean, it speaks of becoming one flesh, huh? Yes. Um, not one, one person, but one, one flesh. One flesh, yes. Uh, but it's true that, you know, it's it's a miracle. It demands a work of the Lord. You know, my biggest struggle when I got married for the first, I would say, ten years mm -hmm. of my life, even more, I, I really wanted to change Mickey because I thought. I mean, he's too slow, yeah. he's not doing that right, uh, he doesn't speak when he should, uh, when he does, uh, it didn't work. It's so much better my way uh -huh. because, you know, we're always right, aren't we? Of course. For sure. Oh, for sure. How could you even ask that? Of course. <laughs> and, uh, but it was a fight in vain mm -hmm. because it's only the Lord who can change people. Mm -hmm. It's not our pressure. It, it can only make thing, things worse. Mm -hmm. Until the day which I understood when I heard the message of the cross, when I heard the, the heart of the Lord about the desire to work in my life, and I, the Lord showed me clearly, I know. Mm -hmm. It's true, it's full of weaknesses, but you have to adapt. This is the man you've married. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a saying that says, you know, don't change your husband, but change your glasses. <laughs> you know, uh, Good one. It, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's real. You can't yeah. change your husband, mm -hmm. but you've got to adapt. Yes. And that is a great work. That is not easy. Yes. Exactly. Uh, this, is, this is a daily mm -hmm. thing that the Lord needs to do in your life. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way, you know, a marriage doesn't stay together just by chance. Mm 
Mm -hmm. You need to work on your marriage for it to stay together. Mm -hmm. you, there is so much to do. It's, it's a whole work site. Mm -hmm. There is plenty to do. So it's not going to happen like this. Unfortunately today, most of the young people, they get married and there it's all based on feelings. It's all based on yeah. that love feeling. Yes. In but cloud that, nine, when you're on cloud nine. Yeah, cloud yeah. nine. And yeah. that doesn't last very long. Mm -hmm. And when you end up, you land, you end up landing, you find out that reality is another thing. Yes. It's not what you thought. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to face that. So there's no secret, there is no, you know, magic marriage, mm -hmm. whatever marriage it is. You'll find out that your husband is different. You'll find out that your wife is different. You'll find out things that you don't like in her. You'll find out things that you don't like in him. And that's normal because none of us is perfect. Yes. So it's only, this is what the Lord said, that we're not supposed to marry two of us. We need to be three. Mm. Jesus needs to be on board. Yes. If Jesus is not on board, we can see the result today. How many divorce, not only in the world, mm -hmm. but even in the church. Exactly. So. There's no secret recipe, okay. unfortunately. Yeah. There's no se secret spice. Mm -hmm. We need... A secret ingredient, nothing. To walk that walk. Yeah. Allow the Lord to, you know, to break us, to bring us so that we can get together and become, mm -hmm. adapt to one another and respect one another and love one another despite our dis differences. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge work that the Lord needs to do in our lives. Yes. And there is no other way. Yes, I thank you for that. It's huge. Emphasis on huge. It's big, hey? It is. But as you said, it's, it's possible because as you said, it's daily. Hey, it's not something that happens at the beginning. Never. Nor at the end. Can I say, now are you totally free from it with your husband? Or you still have... No, of course not. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe <laughs> everything will be smooth. I wish it would be quicker. I wish it would say some things. I wish it would do no. something. You know, it's, it's, there are things that never change, huh? Mm-hmm. And I suppose you must think the same of me. Mm -hmm. You know, he's forever waiting for me, he's for, uh, forever late. <laughs> there are things that, that do not change mm -hmm. even after 40 years. Okay. You know, but you've got to adapt yes. and you've got to choose your battles. Yes. And, you know, speak about things you should speak. Yes. There are things you, you, you must confront. Mm -hmm. There are things it's good that you confront, that you help your husband, that he helps you and confront things. But you can't confront everything because there are things which are natural that won't change. Uh, so yes. it's you know, today, less struggle, yes. <laughs> but still we're not, we're not there. Yes. And you know, we're not, we're not so fighting. Eh? I'm not saying you're that. Not fi you're happy. You're still happy. No, we're not fighting. But it's true that I would still like some few things to be different. Mm -hmm. But... You know, I used to say to Mickey, we're two in the house, but I'm alone. He doesn't speak. <laughs> he, he hardly speaks. Yeah. And me, so, I can comment, I can speak all day. Mm -hmm. And I can say things, I can think, I can have ideas. So, these are not obvious, but you can't change. Yeah. And say, you know, I've tried this one mm -hmm. and it didn't work. Let me change and try another one. No, it doesn't work. This is something for life yeah. and we need to adapt ourselves. Okay. And the Lord is there to help us. Okay. So yes, Tatiana, you wanted to say? No, I was saying it's such a pity because so many people give up along the way because yeah. they see, well, this one's not changing and obviously he's a problem, you know, but it's amazing when we actually take our cross and we actually accept that work in us that, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, finally the husband doesn't have to change. We've changed and the marriage changes mm -hmm. and it's not the same. I wanted to ask Mama Audrey and I'm sure you must have been so grateful after all these years to see the, the, like, the fruit of your marriage, to see, sure. to and, see it changing. And, and the road that we've taken mm -hmm. and grateful to the Lord because without the Lord we would never be where we are today. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you for that testimony, Mama Audrey. Now we're going to have another testimony from a young couple. Um, so viewers, we have uh, Bure and Tafadzwa Mativenga all the way from Zimbabwe. Um, good to have you with us today. So can you please tell us the differences that you noticed when you got married, Bure? Sure, Jackie. There are a couple of differences that um, I did start to notice quite early on in our marriage. Um, one of those being that we think differently. Uh, we make decisions differently. Uh, we wanted to replace Taffy's car a few months into our marriage. And I was looking at the color, the bodywork, everything had to be perfect on the outside. 
and the upholstery had to be perfect. But for Tafadzwa, all he was looking at was, does the engine run well? Is it in good condition? Um, is it a smooth drive? And so we noticed those differences quite early on. Mm. Another difference that um, I noticed was in how we spend money. Mm. Tafadzwa is not a big spender at all. Um, I am not really a big spender, but um, I do like to spend on other people, on the house, on, you know, um, in giving and things like that. And we started to notice those differences quite early on. Thank you for that, Muhe. Tafadzwa, um, sorry, moving over to you, Tafadzwa. Did you enter the marriage with any expectations of Muhe by any chance? Sure, Jackie. The greatest expectation that I had was that Bia would love me that she would be my helper, and that she would take care of the home. And <laughs> to the most part, that hasn't been a problem. But uh, when another expectation that I had was that she was a quiet, obedient wife, which I quickly discovered that it wasn't what she really was. <laughs> Oh, that is classic. Thank you so much. Uh, Mama Audrey, as you can see, he did definitely have expectations. We've heard that from Tatiana. We've heard it from Auntie Zodwa. So could you please um, speak about that, the expectations that culturally even that men have on their wives? You no, know, we heard what um, Tatiana said earlier on about the understanding of the African men, about the wife respecting him. In other words, she needed to clean the house, cook for him, look after him, take care of the kids, do everything. Mm -hmm. And for him having nothing to do, for him he considers, considers that as respect. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a big mistake because respect is not earned that way. Mm -hmm. In fact, respect is earned. Respect is not something technical. Respect is earned by your heart, by what you carry in your heart. That is a true respect. You don't respect a pastor mm -hmm. because he's got a title. You respect a pastor because he carries something and he's bringing something to your life. Mm -hmm. This is why you respect a pastor. It's the same for a man. Mm -hmm. A wife doesn't respect a man because she does all these things. No. I think it's time that the African man mm -hmm. realizes that God is calling him to have a heart. Mm -hmm. What is important is his heart, mm -hmm. not a list of things he should do yeah. or he shouldn't do. Of course, he should help his wife. Of course, he should help her to pick up the water or to in the house. But it's not a list of what you should do. It's the heart that you carry. Mm -hmm. This is what is important. Mm -hmm. And it's so sad to see that African men would be so selfish and only be so centered on themselves and understand respect mm -hmm. just in those silly and elementary ways. Mm -hmm. When his wife is really giving her life for him, and what does the Bible say, Jackie? Yeah. The Bible is clear. If we are going to, we're talking about Christians here. Exactly. If we're going to walk as a Christian, we must walk according to the word of God. Exactly. We have not been saved by the vain way of of our parents, yeah. of this, of that. We've been saved by the blood of Jesus and we've been given the manual. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says to the men, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Yes. This is where we start. Mm -hmm. This is what God expects of these men, to give their lives for their wives. This is their m first ministry. Mickey always says that. Mm -hmm. It is their first ministry is to love their wife and to take care of them and to give their lives for this wife. Mm -hmm. And the wife is not asking for a hundred things. I mean, she shouldn't. <laughs> Maybe she's like, Maybe boy, she likes spending. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and asking for rings. I'm not sure. I'm sure yeah. many of them is not what they're chasing. Yeah. But what they want, they want a man who loves them. They want to be the first person in their lives, in the lives of their husband, yes. not their mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mother of the husband. They want their husband to respect them, to love them and to care for them, mm -hmm. to let them know they are being loved. And I think this is so basic. If only, and it's not hard to say, it's mm -hmm. not, we're not, the Lord is not asking you something impossible. Mm -hmm. It's just let your heart speak, be a servant, be a model to your kids, love your wife, do not worry about what people say, what culture says, mm -hmm. what people think, that's not the point. 
must worry about one thing, mm -hmm. what Jesus thinks, Amen. what Jesus says. Yes. And once again, unfortunately in the church, mm. we don't have the right message. Couples do not hear the message from the heart of Jesus that they need to take their cross, they need to die to one another, to, to themselves, mm -hmm. to accept one another, mm -hmm. to walk in love. The husband never hears he's got to love his wife yes. and give his life for her. When does when do they hear that in church? Maybe just but the, the wife day. does hear she's got to submit. Yes. That's a lot about that. Yeah. So I believe there's such a change that mm -hmm. needs to happen mm -hmm. uh, and to start on the right foundation. Mm -hmm. Because Again, all these young people, they start for them, it's this love story, it's this feeling thing, it's a hype. Mm -hmm. But marriage is not that. Marriage is something very serious and it's supposed to last during all your life. It's not supposed to be for one week, for two weeks, mm -hmm. or for two years. Mm -hmm. It's not a god of a second chance. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. You're married, you've given your word mm -hmm. for bad, for worse, for good. Exactly. That's what you said. Exactly. And that should be that should be the way it is. But mm -hmm. for that, things need to happen mm -hmm. in the men as much as in the woman. Thank you for that, uh, Mama Audrey. We're just going to bounce back to Zimbabwe. Yes. Um, we'll hear from Auntie Zods. Could you please tell us, um, first, Auntie Zods, regarding conflict, you can see that these differences between men and women create lots of conflict. Yeah. Um, on the ground, can you please speak to us about the conflict in marriage? Um, Jackie, I, I really couldn't stress it any stronger than what Mama Audrey has said, because I think for a uh, Christian, especially again, looking at the Christian African men, there's a, 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 an understanding that by taking the road for the wife or by being loving to her, by showing affection, it's taken mistaken as identifying with being yes. European. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Yes. Because we, as Africans, we tend to look at ourselves and say, there's Africans, which is black, and then there's Europeans, mm -hmm. which is white. Mm -hmm. So as an African man, when I'm seen being affectionate and loving my wife, then I can be misunderstood as being now taking on the European culture. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. And I think that's something we need to clarify that there is no European culture, there is no African culture, there is a, a Christian culture. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure if our men understood that, it would really break down all the walls mm -hmm. and they will just, it will now be a Christian walk, not a specific things should be done like this, you must love me like this, you must exactly. do this, because then it puts the woman in a box mm -hmm. and she can't even be free to express the genuine love she feels for him because she has so many parameters to meet and so much, not only it's, it's with him, but with the in-laws, with the society, so much expectation on her and she'll fail. But if only men would see how the Lord just wants us to be free. Uh, I would like to add when the woman works, you know, obviously if she works, mm -hmm. there's probably a need in the family yeah. that she's meeting. Exactly. So if that's the case, isn't it normal that the husband comes alongside and say, thank you so much for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. What can I do to help? Where can I help? Mm -hmm. And so that they can share responsibilities yes. because she's working now. Exactly. She's eight hours at the job. When she comes back home, she's exhausted. Yes. She's got to leave early. Yes. She's got to give herself because today employers are asking everything from their employees. True. The employees expected to give everything they have. Mm -hmm. When they get home, they've got nothing left. They're all tired, yeah. They are exhausted. Yeah. So wh um, what's more normal than for the men to welcome her, maybe make a cup of tea for her, mm -hmm. and say, okay, my love, what do we have to do together? Mm -hmm. Let me see what I can help. That would be so much the heart of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that would glorify exactly. Jesus. Exactly. Thank you, Mama Audrey. We've come to the end of our show. So just to conclude, Mama Audrey, could you please uh, tell us the right reasons we should get married? Is it okay to have expectations, conflict in the marriage? What do we do about it? Could you please tell us the right reasons, the right foundation to begin with? I would say don't get married because it's the right thing to do. It's just what everybody does. It's what is expected from my family. It's what is expected from the, my society. 
don't get married for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. If in your heart you are mature, uh, you've met a man or you've met a girl, and you can feel in your heart there's a plan of God there. Together you can serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. She will be a helper to you. But by all means, I would encourage whatever couple to make things very clear before you get into marriage. Mm -hmm. Even on the side of the wife, you know, it's not, it's not worth it to wait for after the marriage to say, you know, I've been working, I'm tired, you should be helping. Mm -hmm. Why not discuss all these things and agree on these things before you get married? Mm -hmm. Why wait to be in the boat? Talk about these things. Make things clear. Who's going to run the money? How is it going to be run? How, do you, how is your giving? How is your service to the church? Where do you see the, the raising of our kids? How do you see the interference of your family in our couple? I think all these issues should be raised before putting the, the ring in your finger. Mm -hmm. It should be raised before and should be clear between the husband and the wife and should not come after as a, a uh, aftermath a surprise mm -hmm. so please if you're going to get married get married for the right reasons for you to be able to have somebody to help you to serve the lord better to be together with you to so that together you can have a nice family who serve the lord glorify jesus mm -hmm. whatever you do do it for the right reasons don't get married just because it seems to be the right thing to get married mm -hmm. and there is so much to speak about before. There's so much to find out before, mm -hmm. to be prepared, even before we venture into that life, adventure and experience. Thank you, Mama Audrey, for that. Um, and viewers, we have come to the end of our program. Thank you for staying with us. Um, thank you to Mama Audrey. Thank you to Auntie Zod, Tatiana, and a very big thank you to Buhe and Tafadzo for being with us. And viewers, please click on the bell, subscribe, like, write to us, comment. Please, we'd love to hear from you. Till next time, goodbye and God bless.